What is up everybody, it is Hawk here, back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be running through how to prep your Paladin for AoE farming in TBC. There's a lot of stuff going around out there. There's a lot of theories about different kind of gear that people are gonna be running and stuff like that. And so I wanna kind of show what I'm seeing and what you know a couple of us have been theory crafting and what we think is going to be the best kind of gear. I wanna provide you with actual gear sets, actual options you can use, and show you why you should be using those. If you guys haven't checked out the stream though yet, yeah, definitely come hang out on the stream at twitch.tv slash Arleus and hit that subscribe button down below. I'm going to be having a ton of Paladin AoE farm videos for TBC a ton and pre-patch and a ton of Mage AoE farm videos comparing the two, seeing which class is best for which farms, etc. And it's been a ton of fun, but feel free to hop into the stream whenever, ask me any questions about AoE farming and stuff like that. So what you're seeing right here is the beta. I have been trying to get my Paladin as prepped as possible for TBC, farming up as much of the gear as I can get so I could show you guys exactly what I'm going to be doing with pre-patch and then over in TBC as well. There's specific pieces of gear that are going to be incredibly useful for Paladin, so I've been trying to get them to drop and been trying to get them, whether it's in GDKPs or whether it's just off the auction house, whether it's farming myself. And there's a couple more I need to get, but we're almost fully there with all the gear that I want to be able to test. And so I made the tune, copied them over to the beta, and started testing them in runs like stockades. Now you're going to see a lot of healing going off on myself. And so there's a couple different ways that some people think about doing AOE farms. Some people think that the best way to do it is going to be a reflect build. And so they're getting Noggle Ring and they're getting Essence of the Pure Flame and they're getting uh, any other kind of reflect kind of items that they can. You know, if they can get the, the cloak out of BWL, they're going to cloak out of BWL, things like that. And that is actually the wrong way to go about Paladin AoE farming. Now, if you're a warrior, that could be great because a warrior, you could stack up as much uh, you know, tanking potential as you can with a full Wrath build and then having all those reflect items and things like that. But Paladins have a unique benefit in that a lot of their gear has spell power. And so the way that a lot of pieces work in TBC with spell power is that they give a percentage of your spell power back as a benefit to that, whether it be healing or extra damage. And so that's why you can see me healing so much, even when I'm just running. And then when I drop my Consecrate, then everything just dies. 159 per tick, guys, with my one Consecrate. And that's not even including a certain thing that's going to increase to 165 very soon here. And so we can get about 165. On live, we're getting about 65 damage per tick of Consecrate. But we can burn down these enemies way faster. If you had a Reflect build, you'd be focused on when those mobs hit you. And they would do, you know, maybe you'd reflect like between 50 and 100 damage to them when they hit you. So let's say they had a weapon swing timer about two seconds. That means you're doing about 50 damage a second. We were able to pump out 108,000 damage. Maybe a little bit less because we did some damage along the way with Skull Flame and stuff like that. Over a span of about... 15 seconds. Way more damage is going out with focusing on your damage being from consecration rather than your damage being from reflect abilities. Okay, so what specific pieces allow this to work? Well, the first piece is going to be Skull Flame Shield. Most of you know what Skull Flame Shield is. There's a reason why it's been going up so much in price. Skull Flame Shield has a 3% chance when you get struck in combat to steal. 35 life from your enemy. If you were a full Thorns build and you didn't have much spell power, it would do just that. It would steal 35 life from your enemy. But if you have the full spell power build, like we're doing here, and you're able to proc for up to 800 spell power, you're actually healing, it scales one to one with the heal. So you're actually spell or life stealing from that person or that mob 450 plus healing. That's why my Skull Flame is ticking for about 450 while running. And then during the actual kill phase, when I have everything popped, I can life steal for over 800 damage. So you do do 800 damage to the mob as well, but the important thing is that you're getting healed back. So you can see here that I just got healed for 671 from Skull Flame. 792 right there from Skull Flame. 792 from Skull Flame. You're also getting healed from another item. And so that second item that you're getting healed from is called Demon Forge Breastplate. Demon Forge Breastplate is crafted by Armorsmiths, and what it does is it has a chance to steal from the attacker a certain amount of life per second. 
And so what it does is it steals the total amount of life, but it does it over four seconds. And so that's why you see some ticks of, you know, 76 and 94s and things like that. So 75, 75, 75, 75. And so it will proc and it will life steal that health from that mob over time. Now, initially, I didn't think this was going to be that good, but you can see here that we're actually getting multiple procs every single second. That is because the proc chance is based on the mobs, not based on you. What I mean by that is you don't just get one proc. If I had a thousand mobs hitting me, every single one of those thousand mobs could proc that ability. And then we could have just a ton of health ticking on us constantly. And so instead of it just being one tick, which I initially thought it was uh, back before I tested it, of you know us getting healed for one proc of it, you can have multiple procs going, which means you can start healing for massive amounts. When you're just running a thorns build and stuff like that, you aren't getting healing. You don't have that crazy spell power that is allowing you to regen your mana and a lot of the, or regen your health. And a lot of these farms have mobs that can interrupt. And so you're gonna run into issues where you're trying to mow down these mobs, you're trying to do damage with Reflect, but then you just die because you can't keep yourself up because you can't heal yourself. Or you have to go the full Holy build and then hope that Holy Shot can keep you up every 10 seconds. And so you have to have a crap ton of defense and you won't be able to do the big pools like Graveyard. Here we're able to pull 40 elites, level 44, and we actually can face tank them. Now the big benefit is obviously that we have bubble at some point, but you could see here just by dropping the consecrate without proccing anything, it takes for 113. Then I proxy and I learn hero charm procs for 141. Then I get a wrath of scenarios proc and it starts proccing for about 165. But you can also see the healing coming across. So I am getting hit pretty hard here, but the healing is actually going to keep me up and heal me pretty much to full a lot of the time. And then if you get too low, what you do is you pop bubble and you heal. You can see we get heals flying across the screen. Spell power is going to be the way to go, guys, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, there are going to be some farms where we're going to need to be a little bit more tanky. And there's going to be some items that we're going to wear for tankiness. But the important thing is to try to get as much spell power as you can. And if you can focus on getting as much spell power as you can, you're going to be able to not only fly through these farms faster, but also be able to live easier. So I wanna be as efficient as possible going over these builds, but I put together some template kind of gear that you can get so you can kind of think how you wanna gear up your paladins. Now, as I said before, the focus is gonna be on spell power and there's gonna be some specific gear that we wanna get as well. And so I put together the builds that I have, the builds that I would get if I could, and then builds that'll be easier to get. So for the first build, the one that I have is this. So I go for four piece, sorry, five piece judgment. Now, the reason why I go Judgment and not Avengers, because Avengers would have more spell power, is because Avengers is a five piece, including the chest. And so in order to get the Avengers set bonus, you would need to have the Avengers set, but then you can't wear Demon Forge Breastplate. And as I said before, Demon Forge Breastplate is going to be so nice for these AOE farms because you're going to have so many mobs you're killing at once. You're going to have a really good chance of being able to steal life from that attacker and get that proc healing you up. And so Demon Forge Breastplate from my early testing is not mandatory. There will be ways around it, but it's gonna be so helpful. So I decided to go for the T2 set and try to get the five piece bonus. The five piece bonus increases your damage and healing by 47. So you can do any kind of combination of those items to get there. I personally don't have the gloves. And so I Peacekeeper Gauntlets instead. Now Peacekeeper Gauntlets are really nice because healing converts at a rate of 33% to spell power in TBC. What I mean by that is increasing healing done by spells and effects by 59 will now also increase the damage done by spells and effects by 20. And so if we actually take a look at the beta, and we take a look at my gloves, you can see increases spell power by 20 and increases spell damage by 10 with the enchant. And so you're able to just with, you know, healing gloves, get an additional 30 spell power, which is really good. Moving on from there, I have Stylene's Impending Scarab. If you can get Force of Will, that'd be a great option as well. If you can pair Force of Will with Stylene's, that might also be a really good idea if you need to reduce a little bit more of the damage that you're taking. Then we start getting into the specific items. Now the specific items are gonna be Zandalarian Hero Charm, Wrath of Scenarius, a Spell Power Weapon, Skull Flame Shield, Demon Forge Breastplate. Now let me go over exactly why we get those specific items. Skull Flame, Demon Forge, we've gone over. Massive amounts of healing, 
AoE damage that's going out. Spell power weapon. This is your one chance to get an item with a huge amount of spell power, whether it's End of Dreams, Lockamere, Wraithblade. Even something like Mage Blade with a 30 plus spell power enchant is a still 70 spell power. So this is a very easy way to stack up that spell power from items. I was fortunate enough to get End of Dreams. Obviously it's not gonna be easy to get for a lot of people and there's RNG involved, but if you can just run ZG, try to get Bloodcaller, MC, try to get Mage Blade, BDBL, try to get Lockamere, or Nax potentially, or even AQ if you wanna get the Scepter off the last boss and AQ off Cthune, that Scepter is gonna to convert to 66, I believe, spell power in TBC. So any of those options would be great. Try to get a huge plus healing weapon or a spell power weapon. Sandalarian Hero Charm. Now this is pretty easy to get. You go run ZG, get the headpiece, or get the heart of a car, turn in the heart of a car, and you can get the Sandalarian Hero Charm. What this does though is it increases your spell damage by up to 204 for 20 seconds. Every time you cast a spell, it's reduced. And the fortunate part is that Consecration, the way it works, does it's not a snapshot item. And what I mean by that is some items, such as uh, Warrior's Diamond Flask, will take a picture of the current spell power that you have and save it for the entire duration of that proc. The way that Consecrate works is whatever your current spell power is, that's how much the tick, individual tick, is going to be based off of. So if I drop Consecrate, then proc Zandalarian Hero Charm, I'm actually going to be doing that additional 204 damage, and it's not going to count as using a spell after it was already procced. Then we get to the Wrath of Scenarius. Wrath of Scenarius is going to be probably the best item that you could possibly get. I've been spending a long time over the past couple of weeks trying to figure out the most optimal way to get it and getting it myself. It has been a grind and a half, but the fortunate part is that the grind is gonna be easier in pre-patch and TBC. It definitely TBC, hopefully pre-patch. And so I'm gonna have a video walking through the most efficient way to get the Wrath of Scenarius and also walk through my recommended way to do it as a, you know quickly as you possibly can, including in pre-patch. Because the Wrath of Scenarius is probably the best single item that you can have and it actually will last you all the way through TBC AoE farming and into Waddle K AoE farming as Paladins. Why? It gives you a chance when your harmful spells land to increase the damage of your spells and effects by 132 for 10 seconds. This has a 5% chance to proc, which means that if you're hitting 70 mobs, you in theory have a 350% chance to proc. Now, there's still going to be a chance where it doesn't proc, but it is a nearly 100% uptime and a direct increase of 15 damage to your Consecration ticks, not to the whole ability, the individual ticks. So when you combine Wrath of Scenarius with Xandalarian Hero Charm for the initial proc, you get 336 additional spell power from two items. Pair that with a good weapon, and that's almost 450 spell power from three items alone. You can't see it here because this doesn't include procs and it doesn't include the, the healing conversion on Peacekeeper, but that allows us to get to nearly 800 spell power in pre-patch and have our Consecrate do 1,200 damage per Consecrate. It is absolutely incredible. Now, as far as the enchants before we jump into other gear, I'd recommend getting the enchants from the idols from ZG if possible for the helm and the legs, the shoulder enchant from ZG, Guys, Exalted with ZG is actually really cheap and really easy to get relatively. The way to do it is to get a bunch of Bijus, turn in the Bijus, use the charms that you get, and then that can actually get you the rep very quickly. Getting to Revered only costs like 150 to 200 Bijus. Getting to Exalted only costs about 350 to 400 Bijus. So depending on the cost in your server, it won't be too bad of a grind, but extra 18 spell power will be worth it. I go for superior defense on my cloak just to get some additional armor plus three defense to my chest. Now, a lot of people are gonna be saying lesser absorption, but there's some cons to the lesser absorption to the chest, which is that if you are completely absorbing the armor, it doesn't count as you getting hit, which means you're not procking Demon Forge Breastplate and you're not procking Skull Flame Shield. So while it will be able to absorb a little bit more damage than plus three defense, this will still allow you to be able to get hit, which will then proc those abilities. Healing power to Bracers will give eight spell power and TBC. Obviously, I wish there was a cheaper way to do it, I guess, the, I guess it actually doesn't cost too much at this point, but uh, this is probably gonna be the best enchant that you can get. Now, for gloves, you actually probably wanna go firepower. I went healing power just because currently I'm also doing some healing and axe and things like that, and so I wanna be able to have healing power on my gloves for that, but enchanting with firepower is going to be better. Why? 
Although the Demon Forge Breastplate and Skull Flame Shield look like they're proccing a shadow ability, it's actually proccing a fire ability. And so the damage from Skull Flame Shield, the life steal from Skull Flame Shield, the damage from Demon Forge Breastplate, Life Steal, and the healing from life from the Life Steal, respectively, will be based off of fire damage. And so the Enchant Gloves Fire Power will actually give you an additional 10 spell power as opposed to gloves of healing power. So that's why you can get additional 10. And then for the boots, just plus, 10, plus seven stamina. Now, the reason you can go plus seven stamina is you don't need to have minor run speed on boots because you have Pursuit of Justice. Real quickly, running through some other items you could get, Gloos, the Missing Collar, Cthune Neck, some kind of defense neck is actually going to be really good as well. Now, you do lose about 25 spell power, but that extra defense might make or break it in some of these farms. Force of Will, as we talked about before, if you need to uh, pop this out, this might be a really good item. Now, reducing all melee damage taken by 25 for 10 seconds, the way that Blizzard has done the formulas, there is kind of diminishing returns, and so if it's a much lower level mob, you probably won't get the exact 25 reduced damage, and if you reduce the damage completely, you won't be getting procs of Skull Flame Shield, which will be okay if you're not taking any damage, obviously. But this is going to be a pretty good option to try to help in things like ZF and then future farms like that as well. As far as the legs go and, you know, shoulders off pieces, stuff like that, leggings of the Grand Crusader, great option out of Nax. You can also get the rank 10 legs and the rank 10 shoulders. So if you look up, if you look up the Knight Captain's Limelar leggings, you can see 25 spell power on these legs, but then you can also see the two set bonus of increases your damage and healing by 23. And so this is actually a really big kind of benefit. The rank 10 gear won't be hard to get in pre-patch. If you didn't know, you just have to do the BGs, get honor, get marks, and then you can buy the gear. And so here you can see a gear set with those shoulders and legs combined. You can see the two set proc. The shoulders are going to be pretty easy to get with the legs. The one thing I do recommend trying to do is if you do have, you know, the judgment set, try to prioritize making sure you have that five piece judgment over that just because it's 47 spell power as opposed to 23. But that is definitely something you can roll with. Here's the marker Cthune. Great option off of Cthune that you could get, Lakamir, and then Overlord on Expand. You want to focus on getting as much block as possible because block is going to be able to proc um, the Skull Flame Shield. It's also going to proc, if it's not a full block, it's also going to be able to proc Blessing of Sanctuary. So you'll be able to get out a little bit more damage with block. And so block is going to be pretty much the enchant that we focus on with the shield for lesser block. You can also go with Thorium Spike if you feel that would be better. I would recommend going lesser block though. Now to the last part what talents to run. And so there's a lot of different builds that a lot of people are going to go. There's the Holy Guidance in the Holy Tree, which increases your spell damage and healing by 7% of your total intellect. Some people will think, oh, wow, I'm going to go down and get this because this is actually going to increase my damage by even more. In reality, with the intellect that we have at level 60, we really only have, let's go to this set, like 231. And so it's not going to be that great. It's going to be like, 80 to 100 spell power, which when you already have 800, it's only like a 10% damage increase, but you're going to be missing out on a lot of other abilities. Primarily, Pursuit of Justice, Sanctidora, and Vengeance. Another popular build is going to be going way down in the defense tree. This is going to be more of the tanking kind of build. Getting one-hand specializations because you're going to do 5% more damage. Getting Ardent Defender because you're going to take 30% less damage when you're below 35% health. And getting Holy Shield. The issue with Holy Shield is that it's going to fall off instantly. The Ardent Defender is very, very nice. I wish I could get this, and we will be able to get this at level 70. But at level 60, your goal is to kind of be able to heal yourself more than you'll need this. And if you aren't running a Reflect build, you won't need the reduced damage too much. You shouldn't be getting below the self. And if you get below the self, bubble and heal, basically. And so I went with the full damage build. Now, why am I going into Ret to try to get more damage? Well, let's take a look at a couple of these important things from the Ret build. Number one, Pursuit of Justice. It reduces the chance you'll be hit by spells by 3%, which is nice, but also increases the movement speed and mounted movement speed by 15%. This is going to help you round up the mobs faster and run through the instances faster, staying ahead of the mobs so you aren't taking too much damage as you run through. Crusade increases all damage you do against humanoids, demons, undeads, and elementals by 3%. Sancti Diora, 10%. Improved Sancti Diora, 2%. So from these three talents alone, we're going to be doing an additional 15% damage to all the mobs that we hit. And then the last ability, Vengeance, gives you an additional 15% damage when it stacks up three times after dealing a critical strike from weapon, swing, or ability. This includes grenades. So if you grenade and then you crit all the mobs, it will proc Vengeance. 
from what I'm finding, Vengeance is already up 100% of the time, so you don't even need the grenade, but this increases your damage by 15%. So from these four talents alone, we are up 30% additional damage. Ultimately, I find this 30% additional damage to be much better than any kind of additional defense that we can have. We're going to speed up the kills. We're going to be able to steal a little bit more life, but we're going to be able to burn through the mobs very quickly. Going into the defense tree, I do get the shield specialization, definitely get the mark of sanctuary or blessing of sanctuary so we can reduce the damage that we take. Full defense, obviously redoubt is going to be amazing. I choose to go guardian's favor over toughness just so I have bops up as well. If I need bops or maybe blessing of freedom in SM and things like that, you could go toughness though instead of guardian's favor. It's up to you guys which you would like to go there. Improve Righteous Fury is going to reduce the damage you take by 6%. The reason why I go Shield Spec over the Toughness, which is, you know, the big decision between these two, I'm finding that with the gear that I'm wearing with about 350 defense, I'm not stopping too much of the damage where I'm getting hit for basically nothing. So even if I block the damage, they're not full blocks. And so I'm going for Shield Spec to basically say, when I block, it's not blocking the full effect. Let me mitigate as much damage as I possibly can when I do block. Otherwise, I would go toughness with armor. So hopefully this kind of gave you an intro into the Paladin AoE farming and what you're going to want to be able to do so that you could do stuff like this and have ticks going out for 185 and be pumping out over 20,000 damage a second with AoE farming. It is going to be so much fun to see what Pallies can do in the pre-patch. I'm going to be having a ton of videos, a ton of content focusing on how to help you guys get to whatever you guys want to do with your Paladins and the Mages and comparing the two, which one's going to win, stuff like that. So definitely check out the stream, hit that subscribe button down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.